Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to my channel, Science of Life with Dr. Mohammed Yusuf. Today I am going to talk about the formation of RBCs, which is known as erythropoiesis. Genesis, erythrogenesis. It is also known as erythrogenesis. Erythropoiesis, erythrogenesis means production of red blood cells, production of RBCs. But before that, one ayah from Holy Quran. Aud billah ibn shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina manu la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tasta'nisu wa tusallimu ala ahliha. Dalikum khairul lakum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Ay iman walo, apne garo ke siwa aur garo mein daakhil na ho jab tak ijazat na le lo. Aur waha ke rehne walo ko salam na kar lo. Aur yehi tumare liye sara sar betar hai. تاکہ تم نصیت حاصل کر تو یہ وہ مینرز ہیں سکھا رہا ہے اللہ پاک سکھا رہا ہے کہ دوسروں کے گھر میں داخل ہونے کا طریقہ کیا ہے کہ اجازت لے کر سلام کر کے ان کے گھروں میں داخل ہو اللہ پاک سمجھ عمل کی توفیق سو ریسرو پویسیس آر فارمیشن پروڈکشن جینیسیس آف آر بی سیس دی ان ایمبریانک لائف آر بی سیس آر سنتیسائیس ان دی ایمبریانک لائف فرام دی یوک سیک Embryology may happen in the Koga yolk sac is the site of production of RBCs and then later on the spleen and liver and lymph node in the uh, early uh, fetal life in the middle trimester of the pregnancy fetal life may uh, the spleen liver and lymph node they produce RBCs are red blood cells and then Gradually, it is uh, being taken over by the red bone marrow. This production process is taken over by the red bone marrow of all the bones in the fetal life and early childhood till the age of five years. Red bone marrow is the uh, present in all the marrow cavities of the bones in the fetus. All of the even long bones or small bones, the, the cavities in the bone, they are filled by the red bone marrow and uh, red bone marrow produces bone. And with the after the birth of the baby, red bone marrow is present, still present. But later on, the uh, long bones, the shaft of the long bones is filled by the yellow bone marrow and the red bone marrow only exists at the um, um, head of the lung bones are ends of the lung bones and the uh, vertebrae and ribs etc sternum red wherever red bone marrow is present so in the fetal life mo most of the uh, red bone marrow they are filled with the red bone marrow and they produce the rbc so red bone marrow is in sternum and vertebrae and ribs and base of the skull and upper ends of the lung bones in adult life Adult life may cause they produce it from all these lung, wherever the road, red bone marrow is present in the vertebrae, in the sternum, in the ribs, and the, in the skull, even some of the flat bones, but not in the shaft of the lung bones. Heads of the, uh, ends of the lung bones contain red bone marrow. So red bone marrow is the pre, pre, um, uh, site of production of RBC in, in all the extra uterine life after five years. Now, erythrogenesis in bone marrow, this uh, diagram is showing you the uh, production of uh, this um, RBCs in the bone marrow. You see the production of in tibia shaft may in the early life, they, it is being produced by the in the shafts of the tibia and the femur shaft and, and the early life. But up to the age of about 15, 20 years of age, there is no production of RBCs from the shaft of them because the shaft are filled with the yellow bone marrow or white bone marrow and but the the vertebrae and the sternum and ribs they continue to produce the rbc throughout their life up to age of 70 years or beyond that because the red bone marrow is then present in these sites and the ribs are vertebrae and sternum so rest of the life in elderly people the these are the three areas where the uh, red bone marrow is present are rbcs are produced now very important part of the RBCs is hemoglobin. Main um, ingredients in the RBCs, which is responsible for the carriage of oxygen, this is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, normal hemoglobin production depends upon this uh, adequate supply of iron. Iron is the important part of the hemoglobin. So iron must be supplied. Iron is delivered to the RBCs precursors in, bo in more bone marrow by the transferrin 
in last lecture, previous lecture, we talked about the function of plasma protein, transferrin is the plasma protein uh, carrier for the iron. So this transferrin is responsible for delivery of the RB, uh, this iron to the bone marrow. It goes to the mitochondria where it is inserted into the protoporphyrin to form the heap. So it is the important for the formation of heap. Protoporphyrin is formed from the amino acid and then iron combined with it for the formation of heme. And the, then, so protoporphyrin must be formed and it is formed from the amino acid. Proto, adequate synthesis of the protoporphyrin, which is the part of the heme. And then it is protoporphyrin occurs, uh, synthesis occurs in the mitochondria as well. So adequate globin, globin synthesis, because the heme is formed, it will combine with a, a globin chain, a protein chain, and heme, iron containing part, and then the globin, they combine together to form what conjugated protein. This is a conjugated protein, iron containing heme combination with the globulin, and hemoglobin is formed. And this occurs, this globulin synthesis, as you, all the proteins are synthesized, you must be knowing, it is, they are synthesized in the ribosome. So globin is synthesized by the ribosomes. Now hemoglobin synthesis, the heme is formed from the, this amino acid, that is two succinyl CoA, they combine with the two glycines amino acids. Two succinyl CoA, this is biochemistry. That is two succinyl CoA, they combine with the two glycine to form our ring structure, which is known as pyrrole. And then four pyrrole, they join together to form a structure which is known as protoporphyrin. There are different types of the protoporphyrin, but protoporphyrin 9 is used for the synthesis of hemoglobin. And this protoporphyrin 9 plus iron leads to the formation of it. So protoporphyrin formed by the combination of two, four pyrrole and this protoporphyrin combined with the hemoglobin and this iron, ferrous form of the iron, double two uh, plus sign ke saath, that is ferrous form of the iron combined with the, um, uh, this protoporphyrin. This, this is the structure of that heme, that is this structure around this iron is the protoporphyrin and this iron combined with this and this is the uh, structure of the protoporphyrin. This protoporphyrin then, com this heme then combined with the globulin. This proto uh, polypeptide chain, uh, globulins are the produced by the ribosomes and they will combine with this heme, will combine with this, this heme will combine with a pro uh, globin chain, polypeptide chain and hemoglobin chain. That is known as one chain will be formed, hemoglobin chain, alpha chain or beta chain and there are four chains in a one molecule. So one chain kaise banti hai? That is the, this heme, heme plus the, um, uh, this polypep uh, the polypeptide chain. This results into this hemoglobin chain. And four chains result into the combination of what we term as the hemoglobin. And the structure of, so two alpha chain and two beta chain, the hemoglobin. In the alpha and beta chain, the, on their differences only the, this globin part of this, this the uh, polypeptide form, the globin form, may, there is some difference in the uh, amino acid um, uh, sequence and that uh, results into the alpha chain and beta chain. There are two alpha chains in the hemoglobin uh, and two beta chains. Uh, two alpha and two beta chains in the normal adult hemoglobin. So this is the structure of that is the heme part and this is the one beta chain, this is another beta chain, though be, uh, two beta chains and two alpha chains, they result into this combination results into this is the big structure hemoglobin com consisting of four chains, combination of four chains. So this is the structure of hemoglobin. There are different types of hemoglobin as well. 90 to 95 percent of the hemoglobin is this. We saw the diagram. This is the 90. This is the 95 percent of our hemoglobin. Is the 92 to 95 percent. This is known as hemoglobin A, our adult hemoglobin. That is two alpha chains and two beta chains, and molecular weight of this is the 64,458. 
molecule bed. So this is the most abundant hemoglobin, hemoglobin A. But there are some other variants as well. There is the uh, 3 to 5 percent of hemoglobin in our blood is hemoglobin AC. What is this? This is the same adult hemoglobin, but with this, the uh, glucose has combined it. It is glycosylated hemoglobin. It is gl glucose has combined, and this is very important test for the uh, diabetic people. The people who have got the high blood glucose level for the longer duration, this concentration of the hemoglobin A1, A1 AC is in, increased glycosylated hemoglobin increased. So the some glycosylated hemoglobin A is known as hemoglobin AC. Then there is hemoglobin A2. This is a, this was probably A1 and this is A2. What is that? The difference is uh, there are two alpha chains and there are two delta chains. Beta chain is not there. Some sequence of amino acid differs in the delta chain as compared to beta chain. Small amount is also present in our blood, in adult blood, normal blood, 2% is present. And then some fetal hemoglobin is also present in adults as well. Fetal hemoglobin is present in fetal life only. But in uh, and after the birth of the baby, fetal hemoglobin is replaced by the hemoglobin A or adult hemoglobin. But in fetal life, there is the in the fetus, it is fetal hemoglobin which consists of two alpha chain, two and two gamma chains. And their um, um, properties differ. We will discuss the properties of fetal hemoglobin somewhere, inshallah ta'ala. What is the difference between the uh, properties of fetal hemoglobin? Why Allah has created fetal hemoglobin in fetus and the adult hemoglobin in adult life? Why there is a difference? So fetal hemoglobin consists of two alpha chain and two gamma chains. Gamma chains, beta chain ki bajaya, two gamma chains. The precise order of the amino acid in the, is critical for the hemoglobin structure and function. Precise order of the hemoglobin in the globin chains. That is important. Only small change in the, some small, a uh, um, few changes in the sequence of the amino acid in the gene will result into the drastic uh, change in the function of the hemoglobin. For example, hemoglobin S, that is an abnormal hemoglobin. It is present in a disease which is known as sickle cell anemia. In hemoglobin S, only beta chain, one amino acid and beta chain differs as compared to the normal beta chain. Only one amino acid, probably in position number six, differs from the beta chain. Valine is substituted for glutamic acid. We will discuss at proper time when we discuss the this hemo uh, this uh, sickle cell anemia. So only one amino acid differs, but the result is that hemoglobin because of only uh, change of at one position in the uh, beta chain results into the grossly abnormal hemoglobin and the property changes it that hemoglobin S that is known as hemoglobin S that um, precipitates when it is exposed to low oxygen tension. So precipitates and it causes the destruction of the RBC. We will discuss in um, um, sickle cell anemia. So uh, proper order of the sequence of the amino acid is very important for the uh, normal structure and function of the hemoglobin. An adequate amount of globin synthesis is also important. We have discussed, barely be elaborate. A decreased production of any chain will result if amongst these chains, there are people who have got the deficiency, they cannot produce a beta chain, for example. There are genetic deficiency of the uh, genes responsible for the production of this um, um, protein. Proteins are synthesized by the transcription and translation process, transcription in the nucleus, translation in the ribosome, resulting into the specific sequence of amino acid according to the specific sequence of the messenger RNA um, synthesized from the genes. So if that gene is deficient, then a particular chain may not be formed and the thalassemia is the disease in which there is deficiency of some gene resulting into the deficiency of the hemoglobin chains. That globin chain, alpha chain or beta chain is deficient, so the thalassemia will occur. Now synthesis of the RBCs, that is mature RBCs. We have, Mature RBCs are derived from the main cell responsible for the formation of RBCs is known as committed erythroid progenitor cell present in the bone marrow. 
What is that? Committed erythroid progenitor cells through a series of mitotic divisions and maturation process, RBCs will be formed. We are going to talk about the this process of the synthesis of the um, 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 this uh, multiplication and differentiation is controlled by a protein this is known as erythroso uh, erythropoiesis and there is a protein erythropoietin which is produced mainly by the kidneys that stimulates that enhances the process of uh, erythropoiesis acting on the committed stem cell this committed stem cell uh, to induce the proliferation and differentiation of the erythrocytes in the bone marrow so erythropoietin we are going to uh, see the stages of the formation of rbc this erythropoietin stimulate the different stages of the rbc formation PHSC, what is that? Pluripotential hemopoietic stem cell, the main uh, cell responsible for the formation of all the cells of the body. No, sorry, all the cells of uh, blood, all the formed elements of the blood. So this is the pluripotential hemopoietic stem cell from which the um, RBCs as well as WBCs will be formed. All the formed elements are formed from the this pluripotent hemopoietic stem cell. But when it differentiates into the colony forming stimulating uh, spleen, it is converted into the colony forming um, 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 uh, CFUB, which is converted. Uh, this is the erythroid series for the formation of army and then some cells are converted into the WBCs and lymphoid Cs we are going to see. So the basic one cell, stem cell for the formation of all the formed elements, RBCs, WBCs and platelets, they are formed from the pluripotential hemopoietic stem cell. Tissue hypoxia, if there is as the RBCs are responsible for the supply of oxygen to all the tissues, if there is deficiency of oxygen to the tissues, this tissue hypoxia is very important for the stimulation of the production of erythropoietin in the kidney. Hypoxia stimulates the production of erythropoietin. So the this erythropoietin production occurs in the kidneys. The nucleated red cells precursors in the bone marrow they are called as erythroblasts as long as the nucleus exists in the um, um, series of the uh, different stages of the formation of RBCs, they are known as blast cells. They are known as erythroblasts. RBCs that have the mature, they mature to non-nucleated state, again, they, then they will enter into the blood. Blast uh, cells are present in the bone marrow. When they are mature, they are converted into RBC. There is no nucleus and, and only then they will enter into the blood stream from the bone marrow. When the cells have lost their nuclei, they are called erythrocytes. Jab tak unke mein nucleus maujood hai, they are known as blast cells. When they, they have lost the nucleus, they are known as mature cells, RBC. Now, young erythrocytes, that contain residual RNA just before the entry into the blood. Some residual RNA may be present. They are known as reticulocytes. Bone marrow erythroblast for proliferation and maturation occurs in the orderly and well-defined sequence. We are going to talk about that sequence, well-defined sequence. And there is gradual decrease in the blast cells are original pluripotential hemopoietic stem cell or the erythro erythroblastic stem cell is a big cell. Then there is gradual reduction in the size, gradual decrease in the size occurs and the condensation and eventual expulsion of the nucleus occurs from the cells and it is converted into an increase in the hemoglobin production. Initially, there is no hemoglobin and with the advancing stages of the formation of RBCs, hemoglobin synthesis occurs. 
This is the that is this is the hemoblast, the main cell from which is responsible for the. This has been derived from the pluripotential hemopoietic stem cell. It has been converted into hemocytoblast, and this is the pro. This is converted into pro erythroblast. Now this will go only towards the formation of RBCs. This may go towards the formation of WBCs as well. This is because hemocytoblast. This is pluripotent, pluripotential hemopoietic stem cell. But when it is converted into to proerythroblast it will only lead to the formation of rbcs only so there is stages are it is it is proerythroblast size is reduced nucleus is condensed and it is early erythroblast and then late the, the late erythroblast and then the normoblast they are known as and nucleus is being evaginated ab and expelled out and it is converted into reticulocyte some network is there and then it is converted into pure rbc so these are the stages of rbcs we are going to name those stages the normal erythrocyte concentration varies with age we we uh, we, uh, we in the first lecture we on uh, hematology i it's five million per cubic millimeter of blood is the average RBC count. The normal erythrocyte concentration varies with age, sex, and the um, geographic location of the person uh, living in the different areas. For example, that higher altitude number of RBCs are more. Increased number of RBCs production at birth. In the newborn babies, number of RBCs is high. And the decrease um, uh, until the age of two to three months. Next two to three months, there is decreased production of RBCs in newborn babies. And then the, this is known as physiological anemia. Newborn babies are very red. They are full of a lot of hemoglobin and large number of RBCs are there. But the next two months, they become uh, gradually pale. And the mothers, they uh, are, uh, they say they are, our, their babies are becoming pale. But that is normal. That is physiological anemia. Decrease uh, you know, uh, production of the RBCs occurs in first two, three months of the life. So physiological anemia due to the low erythropoietin production. And then RBCs count increases to adult level about the age of 14 years, adult level, the pointe pointe. And male have got the RBC count more than uh, the female because of the presence of testosterone in male testosterone and the male hormone responsible for increased production of RBC. And the at high altitude, where there is a relatively um, low oxygen partial pressure, at high altitude, for example, in Skardu or base bank camp of K2 or at very high altitudes, the, uh, the oxygen partial pressure is low. There is relative hypoxia and hypoxia needs more uh, RBC for the supply of oxygen to all the tissues. So they, there is more erythropoietin production and decreased partial pressure of oxygen causes more production of erythropoietin and number of RBCs are more in the dwellers of the high altitude. Hypoxia and erythrogenesis, that is whenever there is um, hypoxia tissue oxygenation, decreased tissue oxygenation due to high altitude or due to some diseases in the body. At Eptobad or at Peshawar, if there is decreased um, 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 some lung disease causing less oxygenation and hypoxia in the body, that will increase the number of RBCs because tissue hypoxia lead to the production of the erythropoietin and erythropoietin stimulate the erythropoiesis process. But when oxygen, proper oxygenation occurs, this will inhibit the production of erythropoietin. So uh, hypoxia is very important for the regulation of the erythropoiesis or erythrogenic formation of the RBC. Now, requirement of erythropoiesis, we have to touch kiya tha, amne, vitamin B is very important for the, it is required. Vitamin B is required for the synthesis of DNA and maturation of the RBCs. And the folic acid is also required for the synthesis of DNA and maturation of the RBCs. Both are required for the thymidine triphosphate. This is required for the, very important requirement for the formation of RBCs. Uh, this uh, um, uh, nucleic acid, nucleic acid synthesis. Now, iron is also required, 
and the proper uh, protopore firein synthesis proteins are required proper globulin chain synthesis is required and the cobalt some um, uh, trace elements cobalt is also used in the uh, and copper is also important small amount of copper small amount of copper uh, is required for the proper formation of rbcs zinc is also required now zinc so these three elements that is cobalt copper and zinc trace elements they are known as they are very small amount of these is present in the blood and they are important for the erythropoiesis for the formation of rbc factor which influence the erythropoiesis and it is the there are certain uh, other factors as well from the body some hormone for example for example there are growth inducers which are interleukin some uh, production from the maybe some cells cytokines are produced which influence which are known as growth inducers and then there are differentiation inducers and there are there is erythropoietin we have already talked about and the so all these uh, there are are many factors which can influence many um, cytokines which can uh, stimulate or inhibit the production of rbcs so hypoxia we have to, this is hypoxia causes the this is also known as renal erythropoietic factor which is produced which converts the fa um, formation of the erythropoietin and which is cause which is important growth inducer and it leads to increase growth inducers and growth differentiation and will lead to the formation of rbc when there is hypoxia due to any reason for example due to cardiac failure due to pulmonary diseases due to any reason or lung diseases or high altitude hypoxia this will lead to the more production of erythropoietin and increased number of rbcs and testosterone also stimulates cortisol also stimulates this is these are the two hormone testosterone male hormone cortisol is important glucocorticoid produ produced from the adrenal cortex they are also the uh, stimulate the erythropoietic process now the different stages of formation of rbcs we are just uh, listing the different stages there is pluripotential hemopoietic stem cell hemocytoblast pluripotential hemopoietic stem cell this is also known as hemocytoblast all the cells of the blood can be formed from this pluripotent multiple cells can be formed from this but when it is converted into committed stem cell cfue this will lead to the formation of rbc so it will be converted into pro erythroblast then it will be converted into the basophilic erythroblast then it will be converted into polychromatophilic erythroblast as i said whenever when the nucleus is present in different stages they are known as blast cell so these are all immature rbcs so the polychromatophilic erythroblast and then the orthochromatic erythroblast and then the reticulocyte nucleus is originated at this stage and the remaining part which contains some um, um, remnants of the uh, network uh, that is reticulocyte and then it is converted into the mature rbc erythrocyte so these are the five six uh, important stages of the formation of rbc this is a, a picture from probably from your textbook guidance that is the pro erythroblast basophilic erythroblast and polychromatophilic erythroblast the difference is hemoglobin appears in this at this stage and then orthochromatic erythroblast this is the reticulocyte and rbc that form normally 1 to 15% of the rbc die during maturation many cells they die during process of maturation and erythroblast normally spend 4 to 7 days to be, uh, proliferation and maturation in the bone marrow for the formation of rbc 4 to 7 days one week is required so the stages of maturation from the most immature to the most mature are these are the stages we have already say, um, uh, listed the stages but here pro erythroblast is something like this this is the pro erythroblast a big cell containing a big nucleus and cytoplasm basophilic usually and this is again the pro erythroblast only different is it has condensed nucleus has condensed and it has reduced in size it is the basophilic erythroblast then next one is the polychromatophilic erythroblast nucleus is further condensed but 
that in the cytoplasm there is appearance of the this um, hemoglobin as well. So multicolored polychromatophilic erythroblast, multicolored basophilic substance is also present, and hemoglobin which is acidophilic that is also present. So it is known as polychromatophilic erythroblast. Then it is converted into further condensation of increased concentration of hemoglobin in the cytoplasm, more condensation of the nucleus, and then the nucleus will be originated and only network of the meshwork may be visible this is reticulocyte and then it is converted into mature rbc so these are the different stages of the formation of rbc this is another uh, picture from some other um, Google I have seen. That is, it is converted basophilic um, erythroblast, polychromatophilic erythroblast, and then the normoblast, then the reticulocyte, and the RBCs. You can see a gradual reduction in the size and the gradual um, 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 condensation of the nucleus and final evagination of the nucleus and formation of RBCs. Now this is bone marrow and it is entering into the blood in this stage at the reticulocyte stage. So reticulocytes enter into the peripheral blood at this stage. They enter into the blood and they mature into erythrocyte in next one day, 124 hours may. Reticulocyte is converted into mature RBCs. That network disappears. 1% of the reticulocytes are present in our peripheral blood. This is reticulocyte we do count in the reticulocyte in our physiology lab. So 1% of the reticulocytes are present in adult blood. So they are more in newborn baby because when the uh, rate of production of RBCs is more, naturally there will be increased number of reticulocytes in the blood. So they are visualized by the special staining by the methyl and blue they can be seen, we use it. So there are remnants of the ribosomes are present in the endoplasmic reticulum may be visualized, network is visualized, visible in the reticul uh, reticulocyte. So that is why they are known as reticulocyte. Presence of reticulum network is present. Normal lifespan of RBCs is 120 days, 100 to 120 days is the lifespan of RBCs. All RBCs are removed by spleen. They are the site of the graveyard of the RBC is spleen. There are uh, RBCs are removed, uh, fragile, and they are broken down. Hemolysis occurs in the RBCs. There are three areas of the RBC structure and metabolisms which are crucial for the normal erythrocyte maturation, survival, and the uh, functions and they are the RBC membrane, this gradually becomes fragile with the passage of time. And then the hemoglobin structure and function that is important for the proper function and the cellular energetics because there is no nucleus. So the cellular energetic ATP synthesis that is to the limited time. So cellular energy. So these are the important areas which will determine the total lifespan and the functions of the RBC. Defects in are problem associated with any of these, that is the cell membrane or the um, energetics of the cells will impart RBC, will uh, impair the RBC formation or their lifespan may be reduced or they are become easily fragile if there is something wrong with the cell membrane or the nucleus or the energetics, the RBC will die early. The RBCs must be flexible. Yes, that we, um, in the first lecture I discussed it, the flexibility of RBCs is, deformability of RBCs is very important um, um, uh, fun, uh, this uh, property of RBC. They can squeeze themselves. They are flexible. They can, so flexibility, they are flexible and flexibility is the uh, property of um, uh, membrane and the fluidity of the cell contents. So the decreased flexibility due to any reason will cause the decreased deformability and this will reduce the survival time of the RBCs. They will be easily destroyable if they are not flexible. So decreased RBC survival in the, when they pass through the tight area, especially in the spleen, they will be destroyed. The, Cell membrane of the RBCs is like all the cell membranes and this is the semi-permeable lipid bilayer cell membrane and they are supported by the protein cycloskeleton like every cell. So contains the, both the integral and the preferred protein cell membrane you must have studied and extensive damage cannot be repaired because of the absence of nucleus. 
nucleus is not present rbc so membrane cannot be repaired if some damage to the membrane occurs it cannot be repaired because of the absence of the cell membrane the mature cell lack the enzyme then the cellular organelles necessary to synthesize the new lipid or new protein for the repair of the cell membrane the normal erythrocyte concentration varies with age. Uh, I have seen uh, in this slide that is increased number of RBCs uh, at birth, decreased in the next two to three uh, uh, months, and then there is a in gradual increase up to 14 years, and male may that out there, high altitude may that out there. We have seen all this slide as well. Then the, if the number of RBCs is more, that is known as polycythemia. Increased number of RBCs is known as polycythemia, and it may lead to increase in the blood viscosity. That is the dangerous part of the polycythemia. Polycythemia is good. High altitude people, they have got the relative polycythemia as compared to the uh, people living at the uh, low high uh, altitude. So, the, but if the number of RBCs is tremendous, they can viscosity can increase. It they can RBCs can clog the blood vessel. They can block the blood vessels. So, polycythemia may be relative or absolute. What is that? What is different between poly, relative polycythemia due to the uh, decreased plasma volume, for example, in dehydration? If a person is losing water only. RBCs will be concentrated since it is relative polycythemia. If a person has diarrhea and vomiting and total bl blood volume has been reduced, only water has been lost, so the concentration of RBCs will increase. It is not the absolute increase in the RBCs, it is the relative increase in the RBCs. And absolute polycythemia results from the actual increased production of RBCs, which, uh, which may be occur due to the something wrong with the RBCs. This may occur in disorders that prevent the adequate tissue oxygenation that will increase the number of RBCs, for example, um, uh, uh, people living at high altitude. So the, this is secondary polycythemia. What is that? Secondary to some disease. For example, individuals living at high altitude, they have got the uh, hypoxia and there is a um, uh, relative increased number of RBCs because of this. So this is secondary to hypoxia. So individual living at a high altitude have increased RBC level because the decreased partial pressure of oxygen at high altitude, which leads to decreased oxygen carrying capacity and it causes the relative hypoxia and it causes the production of erythropoietin and that will stimulate the production of RBC. And then this is the cancer of the blood that is RBC. Uh, blood that is polycythemia vera it is the uncontrolled proliferation or production of rbcs or cancer of rbcs which is not uh, which is usually rare normal uh, uh, usually the uh, blood cancer is the increased number of wbcs sometimes this is rbc this is known as polycythemia vera this is uh, the condition of polycythemia so large number of rbcs they may clog the and blood vessels. So that is about the uh, synthesis of RBCs and next time we are going to talk about the uh, disease uh, deficiency of RBCs which is commonly known as anemia, different types and classification of anemia we are going to talk about in next lecture inshallah. Hope you are following me. If you have got some questions, some uh, queries you can ask in my comment section and hope to see you next time. Please do subscribe uh, and share this video to other students so that maximum, maximum student can benefit from it. Thank you very much. Hope to see you next time.